Yes, that is actual size. I can't use Photoshop. Oh, hello. Didn't see you there. Come, join me by the hearth, my friends. It's uh, lovely and warm and kind of depressing given the Christmas decor still being up despite Christmas being long gone. Sorry about that. <laughs> Speaking of long gone, 2018, that's nearly gone too. What better time than now to look at the year on 101 Facts with some of our favourite trivia and tidbits from the year and some bloopers and supercuts along the way and an introduction to our team. It's been a year full of pronunciation attempts. Talact, Rishgershvidishkeit, Dunedin, Mount Kossi Kosko, Uluru, it's also known as Ayers Rock, Svenapaltin Ganglionuraja, 69's number 69. Hide the zucchini, drive my shaft, Cytonina. Hit me, Sam, Sam, Sam. I took a trip to the year 2000. Don't worry, Libby's out the room for this bit. Drive my shaft. Electric boogaloo. Well, we're doing this while talking about a fact about their children. Drive my shaft. More pronunciation attempts. Abolish monarchs, utter a dungan, sustrom ming. The Maori, 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 Maori. We are Lisa Hun, Svince Baskatning. And, of course, actress Jennifer Lawrence has taken out multiple restraining orders against me, but that's normal, right? Jennifer Lawrence, Jennifer Lawrence, Jennifer Lawrence, yes! Haha! <laughs> Jennifer Lawrence, living goddess that is Jennifer Lawrence. Jennifer Lawrence, Jennifer Lawrence, my Jennifer Lawrence themed cake business. Oh, also Jennifer Lawrence. So, join me here for our 101 Facts End of the Year special. Let's get to it. For a start, a hell of a lot of you have been watching this year. 253,733,222 minutes have been watched. That's 482 years and 156 days. That's about the same as 2,327,828 viewings of the Nutty Professor 2 The Clumps movie, 2,615,806 viewings of Bay Pig in the City, or 7,889 complete viewings of the Inspector Morse box set. Basically, a lot of video has been watched. Also, about 90,000 lovely people have joined the Mother Factor family, and we've received 48,000 of your comments, whether good or, well, yeah, those. Righto then, let's get to our first favourite fact of the year. Butterflies are pretty, as are poems. That's not the fact, it's my introduction to it. But look at me, I'm so highbrow and cultured. But so are you guys now too, because this year we put out a video all about Billy Shakes himself, William Shakespeare. And in that very video, we got a dizzying example of the butterfly effect. If you want an indication of Shakespeare's incredible legacy, the only reason starlings exist in North America is because a German-American named Eugene Schaeferlin imported 60 starlings from England in 1890 because he wanted to introduce all the birds mentioned in the plays of William Shakespeare to Central Park in New York. Starlings have since become an invasive species across the entire United States and have caused a number of serious problems, including... On the 4th of October 1960, a Lockheed Electra plane crashed shortly after takeoff at Boston's Logan Airport, after it flew through a flock of 10,000 starlings. Many of the birds were sucked into the engines, causing a catastrophic failure that brought the plane down. The resulting crash claimed 62 lives and legitimately would never have happened if it weren't for Shakespeare's signal reference to starlings in Henry IV Part 1. Yep. That's right, Shakespeare mentioned starlings in a play he wrote in the 16th century, and it literally caused the death of 62 people over 360 years later. Yes, so Shakespeare's starlings had dire consequences in the future, but we learned this year that animals should be respected, especially in Norway, and especially of that penguins called Niels. In 2016, Norway knighted Niels Olav. Which wouldn't be all that surprising if it was this stock photo guy, but it isn't, because Niels Olav is a king penguin. Niels Olav is actually a title that appoints an individual as Colonel-in-Chief of the Norwegian King's Guard. It's been passed down through three king penguins since 1972. The current holder is Niels Olav III. That was from our Anything and Everything Part 2 Electric Boogaloo video, by the way. <laughs> What's that? No, you're running out of countries and nerdy topics. <laughs> <sighs> Anyway, let's move on to our heroes of the year, who successfully managed to let Thanos destroy half of all life in the universe. Seriously, good job guys. It's the Avengers, and Scarlet Witch's aversion to balls. Because Ultron is roughly nine feet tall, and James Spader is, well, not, he wore an antenna-like frame which held two red eyeballs three feet above his head as a reference point for where Ultron's eyes were going to be. Elizabeth Olsen actually struggled to focus on the balls. <laughs> because Spader's performance would be so intense that she would look directly at him out of instinct. Whenever this happened, Aaron Taylor-Johnson would yell, Look at his balls, Lizzie! Don't know why he said it like that. To get her to focus on Spader's big red balls. Yes, Elizabeth Olsen took a slight gamble by not looking at those balls. And speaking of gambling, let me just have a go at this fruit machine right here. <laughs> here we go. Here we go. 
Oh, what are we gonna get? What are we gonna get? Oh, look, I won an incredible fact about ice cream from our Vegas video earlier in the year. <laughs> Let's have a look at that now. You guys will animate the machine in later, right? Cool. We've all heard of Howard Hughes, aviator and multimillionaire extraordinaire, but his behavior in Vegas is something to be, uh, heard to be believed. While staying there, he became fond of Baskin Robbins' banana nut ice cream, and so ordered 350 gallons of the stuff to be flown in from Los Angeles. Happy days. It's what I'd do if I was a millionaire. However, Hughes said just a few days later that he was fed up of said banana nut. Of course he would be, it's a rubbish flavor. Only problem was that the place he was staying at, the Desert Inn, now has 350 gallons of it. Therefore, for about a year afterwards, the Desert Inn gave pretty much all the banana nut ice cream for free to all guests. Hey, it's all very well and good me going through all these things, but let's ask the 101 team if they have a favourite fact. Because it's not just me anymore. Oh no, I pay for friends to help me out. By which I mean I pay them to be my friends, and then they help me out for an even bigger fee. It's a loss economy, basically. I'm Chris. Hello, I'm Jacob. I'm Georgia. <laughs> and I edit for 101 facts and nothing else in life. I write, with a few notable exceptions, all the scripts for 101 Facts. I write up all the facts, I add all the jokes, except for a few that Sam adds himself. It's all me guys, I'm the real head honcho here. I am the person that does all the boring stuff. I help pick the topics, I help put the videos up, and I make all the thumbnails. Georgia, do you have a favourite fact of the year? Th there's too many, you can't pick one fact. Maybe. I've edited a thousand of them, so... You, yeah, no, you can't ask that. There's, there's too many. There's too many. My favourite fact of the year is that, according to some experts, in Asian Island, people displayed submission to a king or chief by sucking on his nipples. It's both bizarre and sexy at the same time. Oh, I think it might have been World War I, where the fact was a sentence, and I, was re I really like that one. Because it took, like, three minutes to edit. It was great. That was my favorite fact. My favorite 101 Facts video of the year is probably 101 Facts about Grand Theft Auto San Andreas because unlike a lot of the other 101 Facts videos we do about video games, I actually have played San Andreas. So it was a nice change and I was able to relate to it a lot better and enjoy actually learning about the game. If I was gonna choose a favorite video, probably The Office. It's Britney Bench. I was thinking about it and my favorite video of the year is probably Spyro because it was really fun for me and Leaf to edit together because we both actually knew the subject, which hasn't happened before. Look at those high flyers go. Hey, speaking of high flyers, let's see this fact from our Kanye West video that you definitely all watched about how he was on the receiving end of a ridiculous lawsuit. Don't hate the player, hate the game. In 2006, West was sued by Robert Craig Knievel Jr., more commonly known as Evil Knievel. The aging daredevil apparently took issue with the music video for Touch the Sky, which features Kanye attempting to launch himself across a canyon in a rocket-powered motorcycle called Evil Kanyevil. This apparently upset Knievel, owing to the clear reference to his failed jump across the Snake River Canyon in 1974. Though Knievel was initially infuriated by the video, the lawsuit was apparently settled amicably, after he met Kanye West in person. Knievel stated that he thought West was a wonderful guy and quite a gentleman. Kanye West there, a staple when it comes to internet controversies, but apparently not YouTube views. Anyway, staples. Yeah, that's another thing you should fear that we found out this year, as it turns out they got a lot of Americans killed back in the day for not being dirty enough. Don't believe me? Well, check this bad boy out. One of the strangest ways that Russian authorities have managed to identify American agents is simply by looking at the staples on their fake documents. Official Russian documents were often stapled together with poor quality staples that rusted, leaving behind distinctive rust marks on the pages. Whereas the fake papers carried by Americans used fancy highfalutin non-rusting staples that were a dead giveaway to Russians. In fact, hundreds of American spies were caught in this very way. Okay, now look, there's a joke that's appeared in absolutely loads of one-on-one -on -one videos this year you probably don't understand, to be honest, I don't really get it either. It's in this clip, see if you can spot it now. Other actors considered for the role of Dr. Robert Ford before Anthony Hopkins got his handsome Welsh hands on it include Max von Sydow and Christopher Plummer. Number 35. Funnily enough, one of the main reasons why Anthony Hopkins agreed to take the role of Dr. Ford was because he was originally going to be contracted for one year, and was told from the beginning that his character would not survive the first season. Whoops, I should have said spoiler alert before, but I, I said it in the intro, so can't do me for it. Well, okay. Everyone gets really mad about sunscreen being gun. Like, the whole thing was supposed to be in Westworld, like, Anthony Hopkins needed sunscreen. And then he talked to a kid robot who was like, oh, I'm going to talk in binary, and it just took over the screen. And that was supposed to be the joke within itself. And then it, 
came up again a few facts later during the moonlight. Anthony Hopkins needed sunscreen because he was still getting sunburned because the sun's rays still reflect off the moon. It's just lesser because it's moon. And then that finished. And then he was asking again during a toast, just as I can't remember the name of the main girl, shoots him in the back of the head. And it just and she just crash zooms into her face going plot twist sunscreen means gun. And it was the funniest thing for me to the point where I've now put it in a good majority of the rest of the videos. It's, it's not a joke. It's not a joke. It's not funny. I don't hate sunscreen means gun, actually. I think it's become somewhat of a recognisable trope for our brand. There's no lead up. I know he thinks that's what makes it funny, but it doesn't. It's not a joke. I think it signals to diehard fans that we still care about them and we still love them. It's not a thing. But he makes it a thing. So I'm all for it. Sunscreen means gun forever. Don't, don't encourage him. But it's the funniest joke. And if everyone disagrees with me, honestly, that makes it funnier. Yeah, thanks, Chris. So if you ever see that again, that's why, even though me and Leaf try our best to get rid of it whenever we see it. You now know the context behind it. Consider yourself a superior mother factor, or if you knew that already, crown yourself the reigning sovereign of the mother factor empire, you beauty. So there we have it. That was 2018, a big year for all of us here at Team 101. What videos would you like to see in the new year though? Let us know in the comments down below, because otherwise, how do we know? How the heck can we ever find out if you don't tell us? But give us some good suggestions, not, you know, Milton Keynes. Also, if you have a fave fact of the year, put that down below too. But in the meantime, we'll see you in 2019. So it's goodbye from me. Thanks for watching this year. It's been a, it's been a hell of a year. Uh, stick with us for next year and hopefully we'll bring you some more facts and great entertainment and more of Sam's screw-ups. So from me, Jacob, scriptwriter and all-around legend, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, mother factors. Keep watching videos and give him a paycheck. And it's goodbye from me. Happy New Year. <laughs>